Hello, folks. I'm finally catching up on stuff. So I'm feeling kind of happy, which is rare. But, oh, wait. You know me, I'm the one, the only, I am Hobo Tom. And just to address one thing, uh, probably for my two year show, one, I'll give you some insight to the Hobo Studio, and two, I'll probably show you some old clips. I actually found. I found an early bump. And that means you no, know, oh, what's his face asked for it? Let's see here. Um hey. Yeah, check me down. You'll actually get to see what my girlfriend looks like. So that'll be coming up probably oh wow, about two or three weeks. I realize I have that much stuff to do. I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about Monday Night Raw. Again, for some reason they didn't have a lot of wrestling, which is weird. And the wrestling they had, for the most part, were wait. Oh wow, that was kind of weird. Well, let's get to it. The Monday Night Raw started off with the Venomous Viper. Oh, he's not done with Matt Hardy yet. He's gonna put. He's gonna bring Matt Hardy to his full brokenness in AEW. Because Randall Orton, yeah, not only was Matt Hardy going out on his back, folks. Matt Hardy was going out on a pressure. Uh, again, Randall Orton. Has a promo, kind of a little recap what happened. Matt Hardy showed up, yes! And then all of a sudden he just started to take the, uh, the sign. He came out with a neck brace. He nailed poor Matt over the rope. Matt was wearing that neck brace. RKO, chair shots, and a concerto on the steps. Ouch. That hurt. Yeah, and the fan. I think this was in Washington, but they were being dirty, drunk Philly fans because they were chanting RKO. And then Randy's gonna kill you. And then after just one concerto, they were chanting one more time. Only dirty, drunk, disgusting Philly fans do that. I don't want to be on Philly fan level. I hate Philly fan. Philadelphia burn this like dirty drunk disgusting Philly fan Taze him that's a whole other issue though. but then we started some wrestling uh, so it was Eric Rowan taking on Alistair Black and I called this from last week mainly with the fact that Alistair Black said something last week about being cage Rowan's the only one with a cage Indeed. So this was actually pretty fun. Rowan, for the most part, was no selling the first half of the match. Which makes sense. He is a bigger, stronger hoss. Uh, Alistair Black it did hit the one knee, but then <laughs> Derek Rowan kind of shrugged that off. Then hit the fun splash on Alistair Black. Then Rowan just beats up Alistair Black. He actually did a drop kick. That's impressive. Drop kicks. Even though they're a very basic wrestling move, you're a big guy. I could never hit any drop picked up with a basement drop kick. Because I cannot get up that high. Rowan can. Rowan has mad skills, folks. And the drop kick. And then on the outside, Rowan tries to be an up, but he winds up going face first into the hardest part of the ring, and that is the steel post. Again, if you don't know about the hardest part of the ring, steel post number one. Steel steps number two, steel ramp number three, turnbuckle bolt number four, and the ring entrance probably some probably somewhere number five. I'm sure I could think of more harder things though. Tables, tables will be five, chairs six, lights seven. Yeah, that really goes down when you think about it. Uh, then, as drones dropped. To a knee. Oh, those vicious knees by 
Alistair Black. He wanted to pick a fight with Rowan. And then eventually Rowan does get Black masked. Alistair Black's there. But I wanted to see Alistair Black go in the cage. What's in the box? Well, that didn't happen, though. Kind of disappointing. Uh, that match was really f was, was pretty fun, though. It was a good cheeseburger match. And Charlotte Flair gives her promo. So over Charlotte Flair makes me yawn. And we have the 24-7 championship. Mojo Rally and Riddick Moss sticking our, our truth. Whoa, the 24-7 champions actually are going to have a legitimate wrestling match for a change. That's good. Uh, R-Truth pulls, pulls a John Cena. He almost got the five moves of Doom. And if he hit the five moves of Doom, I would have been impressed with that. I think the only thing he really did do was the five-knuckle shuffle, though. But, again, he copied that to a T. It was Mojo Rally kind of taking most of the beating, though. Uh, Moss, he... I don't know. The, the, the roll-ups, or the amount of roll-ups is way too much. The Simon Miller has a roll-up poker. I'm going to have gimmick infringement. I have enough issues. I still have, I think, like a month and a half left on my suspension. Actually, a little bit less than a month. Month and two weeks. Yeah, a month and a half, that's about right. On my suspension, so I'm not going to have any kind of fancy counters. I just know Rick lost it a like, flying roll up out of somewhere. I don't even know where he came from. Riddick Moss retains the 24 championships match. Listen, it was different. It was actually in a ring. It was actually kind of fun. This is a cheeseburger match. Again, it's one of those weird things. It was, it was just quick. Then we had Drew McIntyre taking on MVP. Paul Heyman comes out, cuts a promo as a distraction. MVP gets a cheap shot. He kind of works over Drew a little bit. But then, you know what? Yeah. Drew gets Drew gets his comeback. Gets his kick in the Future Shock DDT. Three, two, one. Claymore. Claymore County. Claymore County, Ireland. Or Claymore County, Scotland. Claymore Locks. I guess that's what you should call it. And he wins. It was fun. Heyman come out. He made he made his point. MVP got his looks in. Again, it was just kind of fun and entertaining. Nothing deep or 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 stuff going on. It's a cheeseburger match. Whoa! And then Becky Lynch came out with a bag full of. Hundo dollar bills. Is that gonna? She said it was for the fine she's gonna get. I wonder if she would do the old. <laughs> Everyone has a price. The old million dollar man bounty. That would be fun to see. And then Becky would be such a villain for doing that. Yes. Uh, Shayna eventually. Got into the picture from backstage and dropped the S bomb. So they had to edit that out. Wow. That was pretty good. And then we have Lana and, and Bobby Lashley. And then the whole crowd is chanting, Shayna's gonna kill you. It's always good to hear. Shayna probably will win. I think she's in the Elimination Chamber. And I'll get to that later because I know next week. Oh, I have a lot of videos to make next week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Hey, yeah. Friday. It's a double up. And Saturday. Whoa. I have to start. Means I have to probably start on Sunday doing stuff. Try to reduce my workload a little bit. Then we actually had a probably. I want to say it was one of the better matches of the night. I don't know. 
Yeah, probably one of the better matches. It was Rusev and Umberto Carrillo taking on Bobby Lashley and Angel Garza. Wow, this was actually really fun. Start off cousin versus cousin. That's always good when you just see family fighting. And then Umberto hit an over the rope Mexican arm drag. That's really fun. Uh, eventually, Angel Garza ripped his pants off, threw them in the face of Rusev, and someone was so, so aroused that she came out of the crowd and kissed him. Angel Garza is the best. And then, of course, everyone, uh, it's everyone to the outside. It was pretty fun outside stuff going on again. That was funny. Umberto, Umberto got speared. Ouch. Of course, everyone's chanting, Rusev Day. Rusev Day. Rusev Day. And then lastly, got Mashka kicked out of the ring. And then, oh wow, that was, that was that nasty headbutt that Rusev gave Garza. That looked vicious. Yeah, for some reason, everyone has a strong headbutt except for, like, Americans. It's not good. You can't deliver the most devastating move of MMA of the headbutt. That's actually, although it is banned, I thought it was like vicious. I uh, actually got Machka kicked out. However, Angel Garza rolled up Rusev with a handful of tights. A second roll up, but I'll tell you what, the rest of the match was really fun though. The thing is, it's something different. They're merging storylines with that common theme of well, Bobby Lashley and, and wow, they actually are combining things. Whereas the jilted lovers, the jilted lover and, and the and the cousin taking on the womanizing cousin and and the adult adulterer, Bobby Lashley. Now well, you think of that? That makes sense. Therefore, this is another Actually, this is a surf and turf match. And this was weird, because this show kind of progressed pretty quickly, too. I think part of this I started having my, I had my presidential club sandwich, which consisted of grilled flank steak cut into strips with gouda cheese. And it was a club sandwich, so that was the one layer. Second layer, again, you had your classic bacon, lettuce, tomato, cheese, and mayo. And it was good with cheese curds and french fries. And I forgot to eat my coleslaw with it, so I'll have that maybe for Wednesday. Yeah, later today, it's dinner. Whenever that is. And the next match, it was Natalia versus Kairi Sane. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Gary the King Lawler. Whenever the women wrestlers are there, oh wow, does he just go full scuzzball? Because he's like, oh, yeah, I like those women, yeah. I like to get hit with that rear end. I don't know if that's the exact quote, but still, that's pretty bad. Even me being bad, I'm only bad when I can remember stuff. Carrie seems hot, though. Natalia's, Natalia's a Kmart mom. I want to speak to your manager. Uh, Kyrie saying again, she comes out, busts out the double axe handle chops. Yes, old school wrestling moves. I like that the most. Uh, <laughs> Kyrie saying, in a physical way, told Natalia to, to kiss my ass. That was kind of funny. Uh, Natalia's uh, so stiff slaps. Ouch. Then Kyrie Sane tries to sleep her. No, that wasn't going to happen. Again, Kyrie Sane's smart because her tag team partner, Asuka's outside. So Kyrie Sane goes to the ropes. She distracts uh, Asuka, where, Natal where, where Asuka distracts Natalia. So Kyrie Sane kind of hip attacks her out of the ring. And then Asuka just kicks her right in the head. <laughs> I guess this was a shoot between. Natalia and Asuka. Because then it went to the 10 count. And again, it was fun. It was somewhat different. I have no idea when you, unless Natalia's going to have another tag team partner. 
I don't know why they did the smash, but still, it was fun and entertaining. It's a cheeseburger match. <laughs> oh, then we then we got to the to the to the Monday Night Messiah Seth Rollins. I'm not digging this. I'm just saying Seth Rollins came out with that fur line jacket, delivered a sermon literally from a pulpit. Really? I just started to play Candy Crush during this. I just know that the Viking Raiders saved it by interrupting. Uh, Seth Rollins ate a stunner from Kevin Owens. And then back, poor little Charlie was there, and Seth is like, what do you think? Seth started to yell at poor little Charlie. And little Charlie's not as little as I thought she was. Either that or Seth is very small. And then the club is there. Uh, they, and of course, all the club, they always have to point to the WrestleMania sign. And it turns out we have Carl Anderson, the young Ricochet. I wonder if they ever faced off each with each other the, the time they were in New Japan Pro Wrestling. I honestly don't know. And if you know the much more learned YouTube audience, again, you can always feel free to email or leave a comment. Remember, with that email or comment, you actually do get a shout out video, a shout out video dedication. <coughs> so with this. 80's like, yeah, whatever. It's like Carl Anderson steps up. And Carl Anderson actually started off really good until Ricochet got him outside. Once you get outside with Ricochet, that's when he can really fly. Although AJ also kicked the head off of Ricochet for a little bit. That was fun. It's always good to see AJ kind of heal it up. AJ's so good at it. Carl uh, Anderson, headlock specialist, New Japan style stuff. He actually got out of the way of one 630. That was pretty good. Uh, and then he had that, and, oh, Carl Anderson spine busters is the best of all current wrestling. I mean, Arn Anderson spine busters, the ultimate spine buster. Oh, your root spine buster. I don't know. Carl Anderson might be one. Oh, your root spine buster might be one A. That's really close. There are some wrestlers that have like pathetic spine busters. But not Carl Anderson. He 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 learned that from the great Arn Anderson. That was great. And wow, Ricochet won by a detonation kick. I haven't seen that Matt, that finisher in a while. I was actually confused. I was kind of hoping Carl Anderson would have won by more nefarious means. Overall, it's all a good match with the cheeseburger of a match. Then Liv Morgan gave an interview. I, I like crazy Liv Morgan better. Not lesbian Liv Morgan. She's not as fun. I like live life Liv Morgan. And then this led us to the main event of the evening. It was Kevin Owens and the Viking Raiders taking on the authors of Pain and Murphy. And WWE, why are you taking away people's names? You did it with Andrade. You did it with Murphy. I think of Murphy, I think, Robocop, you will come with me. Do not resist. But, no, we have Barry Murphy, the Australian Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi, oi. Hey, yo, first thing you did, suck it! That's the great. And Buddy Murphy just gets wrecked. And Jerry the King Lawler started to bust out with like Bible phrases and Bible verses and, and biblical image. I'm just like, oh my God. I hope Vince is feeding him this. I hope he's not going off this Monday night Messiah stuff. That's a real turnoff. If, if it gets worse, I'll just be like, no. Nah. Yep, this is the stuff that happened. I don't even care about that, but I don't know. We'll see what happens. Uh, and then, of course, all that beef in the ring once the Viking Raiders and AOP square off. Again, that has to be, I think, by quick calculations, 
There's 600, 800. Oh, wow. Yeah, well over half a ton of humanity in that ring. Not as much. Well, considering there's three people, though, or there's actually six people, versus the four for NWA, that's still pretty impressive. Of course, they, off, the architects of pain take control. I refuse to call them authors of pain anymore. They're the architects of pain. Take control until Kevin Owens gets the first hot tag, hits the senton. However, he cannot get that pop up power bomb. Um, amazing that I'm amazed that he even tried that. And again, that Canadian headbutt. That that act, I think, Acom. Wait a second. So you have Bulgarian headbutt. Let's rank headbutts for a minute. Number one. Oh wow. I hate saying this, but that's going to be the Scottish headbutt. Number two, it has to be the Samoan headbutt. Number three is the Mexican, is the Bulgarian, no, the Bulgarian headbutt. The fourth deadliest headbutt is the Canadian headbutt. Let me know what you guys think. And then with that, again, that strong Canadian headbutt. Ivar. And cleans house. He's fun to watch. He does cartwheels and stuff. I can't. I haven't spent a long time since I've ever done a cartwheel. KO again. Eventually, he hit the senton from the top rope, which just, just looks amazing. And he does it so well. He makes it look real, but yet it's it's like one of the safest sentons ever. The Viking Raiders again. They double team. Authors of pain. And then, oh god, no. Seth Rollins shows up. Why, why does Seth Rollins have to show up? This was actually a fun match, but, but Seth caused a DQ. But we got a Thales, folks. A dusty hamburger. I see it's a dusty old cheeseburger. Of a mask of Seth Rollins. The Monday Night Pyagon Ball. And again, he has too smooth a forehead to be a pro wrestler. That's to be a messiah. And a preacher man, baby. Testify. But then, so the architects of pain, Disciple of Murphy, and the Monday Night Messiah beat start being up everyone. Because again, it's four on three. Four is greater than three. Until the street prophets show up and they clean house, which is good. And then it was a double splash and a stunner for everyone in the ring. Again, a cheeseburger of a match. And wow. That was a wrong which Almost nothing happened. I'll save you for the NWA. I don't know how much is on the NWA this week. And again, overall, eh. It's a cheeseburger of a raw. Nothing really much happened. I think. The go home show for Crown Jewel will be next week. And they're kind of getting things set up for WrestleMania. So we'll see what happens. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. So please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And 